Hello and welcome to another week with me, Justin Garner. Um, this week I'm going to do a review of the channel and see how it's doing. Um, so it's been about eight weeks um, since it's been running and I've each week consistently been producing a video. Uh, this week I've not been able to capture any images. Um, I have been doing stuff but not um, come up with anything that's, um, that's I think is good enough. Uh, some of the things that I have done, I've been out in the Peak District looking for uh, landscapes uh, using the heather, which is uh, in full bloom at the moment, but not found any good compositions, and also the weather's not been great. Another thing that I've been trying to do is try to take pictures of the Himalayan balsam uh, that's flowering at the moment and do macro shots of that, but again, the weather's hampered my efforts. It's been really wet, it's been really windy, and not like August, but that's how things are these days. You can't uh, have um, good weather in the summer or you can't really predict the weather these days. So anyway, so we're gonna just review some of the things that I've been doing over the last few weeks and looking at some of the positive things that I've enjoyed and some of the challenges that I've faced. So first thing is doing these videos is hard. Um, it's challenging as well. So you think that, so what I try and do is I'm trying to record or explain how I go about taking pictures. And then when you're trying to film yourself on your own, try to do that, it takes a lot of brain power. So you're thinking of nailing the shot that you try to get, but also try to think of an interesting way of telling the story of how you've produced that image. Um, looking at the setups, looking at all of that. And then you have other things that come in like lighting. So I've got a big light here that's shining on me now. Microphone placement, where do you put the mic? So it's been a, a big challenge for me and there has been a few videos that I've looked at and I thought the lighting could massively improve there and also the sound was pretty rubbish on some of it or sometimes the mic would move away or come closer as I'm moving around and it's all things that you have to learn and um, develop as you go. Now when I first started out on this um, understanding how to um, produce content in videos um, one person or one video that I watched said that you're never ever going to be ready. You think, oh, you want to be at a certain standard before you start producing these videos, um, but you're not going to be at that standard. And the best way to do it is to start producing the videos and learn how, you make, how you're making these videos. Um, so that's really what I've done. I've thought, I'm going to start the channel, and at the start, the image, the the videos are not going to be amazing and I'll learn as I go. Um, but yeah, it has had some challenges. Um, I feel like uh, some of the things that I need to do, I need to invest in some equipment. I feel like I need a light. I've been using, um, so I've used these, these are my Bowens lights and I just turn them onto full power and they just stay on because you need a constant light. This has been great. This, this is a, a rotor light. Um, and it, you can put batteries in it, um, but you can also plug it into the mains. And this has been great. This has been great for lighting myself up and also lighting some of the um, setups. So this has been a, a, a really good uh, tool to use um, when I'm doing little things. And because it's so small, um, you can use it in little areas. And also the great thing about it is you can turn the power up and down and also you can change the colour how warm the white balance kind of is. So massively pleased with that. So that's been great for the lighting. But I do feel like I need another light, a light that's uh, maybe an LED. This kicks out a lot of heat, so I get really hot when I'm in front of the camera uh, doing this kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so I need to get a new light. I probably need to get a mic as well. The mic I've got, which is just above me here off camera, um, is an old Sony mic and it does do the job but the quality is not amazing and I feel like I need to get a designated um, a designated uh, microphone. The thing is, 
with the lockdown and the way things are, funds haven't been uh, great, and work's not been amazing. So being able to purchase things like that um, has, not, has not been the best time really. So you make do with what you've got. And also I feel like you get creative with the things that you have. So you have resources around you and you think, what can I use to, um, to get the results I need? And you have to just be creative with what you've got. Another thing is, this has been, this is cameras now. So I use three different cameras. I use this GoPro and I've got this GoPro on, um, on this kind of selfie stick, which turns into a tr tripod as well, which is brilliant. Uh, and I've been using this. This has been really good for when I'm out in the field and I'm walking around. The image stabilizer on this, so this is a, a GoPro, um, Hero 7 Black and the image stabilization on this is brilliant and um, so any knocks and wobbles it just stabilizes it really well I did a um, one of my videos was in Scotland and I had this out of the um, out the sunroof of the car whilst my partner was driving whilst we were driving down this really nice road and I got footage uh, with this stuck on the on this uh, selfie stick um, stuck out of the um, sunroof uh, and I got amazing footage and I was really impressed with how still it was as well um, the microphone on this is okay it's not too bad but sometimes it's just easy for me to use this to be able to show what I'm doing because um, it's very difficult when you're doing these videos when you're pointing the camera at yourself um, and you can't move that camera, especially when you're using the big DSLRs. Um, and whilst we're speaking about the DSLRs, I have um, two different cameras. And this, this is another problem for people making film when they're making films about their photography. Because straight away, you need two cameras. You need the camera to show what you're doing taking the photograph. And also you need cameras to film what you're doing. So... It's not like you need one camera just to film everything you're doing today if you made watches or something like that. Um, so it's a challenge in itself because you've got kind of two setups to think about. So I have two cameras. Um, I have a Canon 5D Mark III which I use for doing all the stills and I also use for doing like the interview things like this now because um, the quality of that's quite good. The negative is the screen doesn't come out um, so I have another camera, I have a 60D, and the screen does come out on that camera, um, and I use that for like doing, um, it's easy to film yourself, because you can see yourself with the screen bending out, so that's a massive plus, and I feel like when you're doing video, you do need a screen that does come out, it's a massive help. Um, so, so yeah, so they're the kind of advantages, or the kind of camera arsenal that I use, um, Another thing that I have found a big challenge has been communicating in front of the camera. So coming across well and also speaking about the things that you want to speak about um, and being clear uh, and um, maybe entertaining as well when you try to produce the videos. One of the things I do a lot is say, um, so you kind of have gaps in time or gaps in your what you're speaking about and sometimes your brain's thinking about the next thing and you automatically say um uh, so ideally what I've been trying to do is actually try to cut it out and just have that gap because it doesn't matter you don't need to fill in the gaps and it actually makes things flow quite well when you have a gap there so that's something I constantly need to work on because I know I do say um a lot um but there you go I've just said it again um so yeah so that's another one of my challenges that I found but the conversing and communicating to the camera it's not uh, something that you always do and it takes time so yeah it's a bit of a learning curve for me um, but an enjoyable one I think so the last thing I want to uh, speak about is the editing side of things uh, and this has been again a big learning curve for me but it's one that I've actually really I've enjoyed the whole process of this but I think I've um, enjoyed the editing side of things quite a lot 
um, just learning how to use the software that I use and I use Premiere, Adobe Premiere Pro um, and just it, understanding it and I think that was one of the reasons why I started the channel up as well to force me to produce a video and I kind of kept a strict rule of saying produce one every week um, so yeah so that's kind of me trying to understand this kind of art form or this this way of telling stories and things like that but also learning that software and learning the program um, and I've read a, um, recently read a book um, by, Mal by Malcolm Gladwell and it's about um, people who are masters and being a master of something or being top of your game, the only way you get top of your game is if you do things over and over and over again. Uh, and in that book, um, it speaks about people like pianists and things like that. And uh, if a pianist starts when they're 12 and they practice every single day uh, for hours, say six hours a day, then by the time they're uh, maybe going to university, their their knowledge and skill is that advanced because they've put the hours in and put the time in. So I kind of relate that to doing this. The only way you're going to get good at doing something is constantly doing it. Um, if you just do it randomly, then um, I think y you might enjoy it, but I just really want to push myself forward and try and learn as much as I can and I feel like repetition and constantly doing something is a way to do that and also um, I get quite obsessed with things uh, I'm very obsessed with my photography uh, and this is kind of uh, kind of another avenue that I've gone down um, and I, when I say obsessed I mean that in a positive way I feel like it's good to have good obsessions about things especially your interests and um, things that make you learn and make you um, want to seek out information and also skill up your skills and things like that. Um, so I think that's very good for the mind and also good for things like mental health, things like that. Um, but also good for your self-esteem when you start seeing yourself making progress. Um, so yeah, so this channel um, is many things for me. Um, it's a, a way of um, me explaining the kind of things that I do it's also a way for me to um, learn a new skill that I didn't know about or didn't have um, I did, did a bit of it but I didn't film myself and create content looking at me so it's quite easy for me to film other people uh, and go around making videos for people it's quite a different process that but when you're actually filming what you're doing yourself it, it's a different um, it's a different angle and of the, <coughs> and yeah different way of looking at it so in conclusion um, I'm quite happy with how things are going I feel like not producing the best foot like videos and things at the start is a natural thing uh, and yeah I'm not pushing this try to get lots and lots of followers I'm just trying to create good content and get it to a standard that I think is good uh, and I still feel like I have a lot to work on um, and yeah it, it's just an enjoyable process I feel so if you've got to the end of this thanks for watching um, and there's been no real images it's just been me wittering on really um, but yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon Hopefully next week I'll have some images to share with you and show you how I've done it. Um, so for now, thanks again, stay safe and I'll see you next week. Bye.